I'll briefly take you through the program uh, for third tourism working group meeting, which is being organized at Srinagar from 22nd May to 24th May. So this is the third tourism working group meeting. We have had two meetings before this. The first meeting was at Ranof Kutch, the second meeting at Siliguri. And the key priorities for tourism working group are the green tourism, digitalization, skills, tourism MSMEs and destination management. And the two key deliverables that will be uh, discussed during the meeting, Goa roadmap for tourism as a vehicle for achieving sustainable development goals and G20 tourism minister's declaration. Briefly talking about the priorities, these are the five key priorities which India during its presidency has set for G20 uh, tourism working group. The first is greening of tourism sector for a sustainable, responsible and resilient tourism sector. Harnessing the power of digitalization to promote competitiveness, inclusion and sustainability in tourism. Empowering youth with skills for jobs and entrepreneurship in tourism sector. Nurturing tourism MSMEs, startups and private sector to unleash innovation and dynamism in tourism sector. And rethinking the strategic management of destinations for a holistic approach that delivers on sustainable development goals. So these are the five priorities on which tourism working group is working and deliberating and will bring out these two deliverables. The first is Goa Roadmap and Action Plan for Tourism as a vehicle for achieving sustainable development goals, which will be based on these five key building blocks and linking them towards achieving sustainable development goals. The second is a G20 Tourism Minister's Declaration, which will endorse the key uh, uh, recommendations of the Goa Roadmap and also articulate recommendations for Travel for Life campaign, which has been launched by, uh, as part of Life Mission by Honorable Prime Minister. So on day one, we will have the uh, meeting of Tourism Working Group uh, with inaugural session, which will be graced by Honorable Minister of Tourism, Culture and uh, Donor. We'll also have Minister of State for Science and Technology, Shri Jitain Singh. We'll, have, we'll also have LG JNK, uh, Shri Manoj Sinaji. We'll have G20 Sherpa, Shri Amtap Kant. We'll have Chief Coordinator, G20 Secretariat, Shri Harshwardhan Singhlaji, and Secretary Ministry of Tourism. So that will be the inaugural session. After the inaugural session, there will be two working sessions. The first working session, we will deliberate on the second draft of Goa Roadmap for Tourism as a Vehicle for Achieving Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, UN World Tourism Organization is helping us in preparing this roadmap, so they will be making a presentation. Then all member countries' delegations will be giving their suggestions and feedback. In the second working session, we'll have a presentation on draft G20 Tourism Minister's Declaration, and we'll seek interventions, feedback, and suggestions from the delegates. On the sidelines, we will have uh, uh, very important events, one on film tourism and another on ecotourism, and where again both uh, uh, the participants from the government, the private stakeholders, and in the first event, the international delegates will also be participating. So on uh, the first side event on film tourism for economic growth and cultural preservation, so this will deliberate on the strategies to promote film tourism and see the participation of all the member countries and the delegates. So this also will be addressed by uh, G20 Sherpa. Uh, the Minister of Tourism will address it. And we are having Mr. Ram Charan, uh, who's acclaimed actor and who's really brought laurels for the country. And he will be joining us. We'll also unveil a draft national strategy on film tourism, which will be then open for suggestions and feedback from the stakeholders. And there's a panel discussion on the same subject where a number of countries will be participating, so their delegates will be participating in that panel discussion. On the second day, uh, parallel to the tourism working group meeting, we will have this uh, side events focused on Indian industry and the states. They will be participating. So this is about promoting incredible India through film tourism. So there will be three sessions in this. The first session will talk about the overall uh, uh, you know potential of film tourism how it can be uh, optimized how we can tap the uh, potential of the film tourism we'll have uh, jnk uh, uh, putting up a presentation and the opportunities we will have a global perspective on this from uh, motion picture association we will have industry perspective from uh, federation of all associations in tourism and hospitality sector we'll have secretary uh, information and broadcasting 
sharing uh, the efforts of Government of India through Film Facilitation Office, and we'll have our MOS uh, Science and Technology addressing us. Then there will be state policies and best practices. So we are having the states of JNK, Rajasthan, Gujarat, Madhya Pradesh. They will share their policies on film tourism and particularly how single window system is uh, helping them, uh, you know, promote film tourism. How the incentives are being provided to the producers and uh, production, and what other support are they providing? So this will help us, you know, also draft a national strategy and also understand how can we improve these policies. The third is panel discussion, uh, that's the industry-led panel discussion. So we'll have uh, delegates from Dharma Production, Producers Guild of India, Netflix, New, uh, and FIKI, PSD Chamber, and other speakers. So they will deliberate on the other aspects of how can we uh, create conditions for growth of film tourism. In the afternoon, the second uh, uh, side event is on ecotourism as a vehicle to achieve sustainable development goal. This also will have two sessions. Uh, the first session will talk about the national level scenario. Again, we'll have a, a presentation on national strategy on ecotourism. You know, what does it uh, provide for? How can we take it forward? How can we implement? We'll also have a presentation on ecotourism guidelines of Environment and Forest Ministry. We'll also address one of the key aspects of developing uh, ecotourism, that is carrying capacity assessment at a national level. How do you address this? And then also looking at how do we encourage private investment in ecotourism. So these are the key speakers in this session. We also have uh, Mr. Praveen Pardeshi, member Capacity Building Commission. He'll be sharing about his thoughts on capacity building for ecotourism. We'll also have international expert who will talk about how do we do develop ecotourism, how other countries are developing ecotourism, what are the lessons for India. And we are launching a Travel for Life program as part of Life Mission, which has been launched by Honorable Prime Minister for involving citizens in climate action and environment. How can simple actions by tourists and tourism business can create a better environment, can make sustainable uh, tourism sustainable? So we have launched, we've designed a program, we'll be launching it formally on 23rd. We also have sustainable tourism criteria of India. So that toolkit we will be launching for industry and other stakeholders. And finally, it will be addressed by Honorable Minister. The second section on ecotourism again is about best practices, both in the government and in the private sector. So we'll have a state of Karnataka talking about how they have been able to promote ecotourism through jungle lodges and resorts. We'll have a case of Tar Safaris, how have the private sector succeeded in developing ecotourism. Madhya Pradesh will be sharing their practices and what they are doing for uh, ecotourism. Maharashtra will be sharing their policies and initiatives. And JNK will be sharing from the industry side as to what are the potential and perspectives uh, for development of ecotourism in JNK. And on 24th, we have uh, excursion for delegates. They'll be going local for looking at some of the uh, tourism offerings in the city. Uh, we also have two cultural events. One is the gala dinner, which will be on 22nd, and uh, it's being curated by ICCR and State of, uh, and JNK. And the second is on, uh, which is the last day, which is a farewell dinner. We are also planning for ODOP souvenirs, just to highlight our uh, products from the uh, uh, this region. We've identified these uh, products, which are all local. And this will be given to the delegates as souvenirs. So this is broadly the three-day outline, and uh, I'll request. Uh, thank you, sir. I'm sure that uh, media has got a complete outline of the pr uh, program of the next three days. Uh, now I'll request Secretary of Tourism, Sri Arvind Singh Ji, to please uh, address the media in terms of their. Uh, Chief Coordinator, uh, G20, Mr. Shingla, Chief Secretary, JNK. Uh, Arun Mehta, my colleague from Ministry, Rakesh Verma, Secretary of Tourism, JNK, Avid, ADG PIV, Mr. Chaudhary, all friends from the media. Uh, Rakesh has already given you a broad outline of uh, how the flow of events will be. So from that, that you, you see that the key deliverables are that A, the Goa Ministerial Declaration, and the Goa roadmap that we will, you know, debate on here because the final meeting 
of the G20 tourism ministers will take place in Goa in June. And this is the panel ultimate working group meeting. The fourth meeting will also be in Goa, followed by the ministerial. So for, in that context, this meeting assumes significant importance because the draft of what will be adopted by the ministers will be finalized at uh, Srinagar. It's also important because this is the only working group meeting that is happening in Srinagar as part of the G20 effort. And we have seen excellent uh, response from all the uh, member countries, from the invitee countries and from the international organizations. In terms of participation, we have one of the highest numbers that have uh, registered and got accredited to come to uh, you know, attend the working group meeting compared to the last two that we saw at run of Kutch and Siliguri. And, uh, Chief Coordinator will tell you because he's seeing the other working group meetings also. So very encouraging attendance, which has really encouraged us to make uh, foolproof and adequate arrangements for the meeting. Also, the, what you are seeing is that uh, taking the importance of you know this, this venue, we are organizing two side events. The themes are film tourism and ecotourism. And uh, the deliverables there that you will see will be that a national strategy on film tourism, the draft will be unveiled. And also on the ecotourism side, you'll see the Travel for Life campaign, which will be also launched, which is in tune with the uh, you know, Mission Life campaign launched by Honorable Prime Minister and UN Secretary General some time back at Kevadia. We are also taking this opportunity to immerse the delegates in local sightseeing, seeing the local arts and crafts, enjoying the local cuisine, and the overall experience and the natural beauty that the state of Jammu and Kashmir has to offer as uh, you know, parting gifts, we are giving them one district, one product, souvenirs to take back, which are products produced in Jammu and Kashmir. So we welcome the participation of all the delegates from the G20 member countries, the invitee countries, and international organizations to collectively advance the tourism sector globally and to achieve the UN Sustainable Development Goals of 2030. The G20 event at Srinagar presents a unique opportunity to highlight the tourism potential and cultural richness of the region. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, may I request uh, Sri Harshwardhan Shinglaji, Chief Coordinator G20, to please address the media. Thank you. And uh, let me say what a pleasure it is to meet our friends from the media. Uh, as many of you would undoubtedly know, we are now at an approximate halfway point in our presidency of the G20. In the last approximately six months, we have completed 118 meetings in 46 different cities across the length and breadth of our country. We uh, obviously, um, uh, for every meeting that is held, there is a lot of planning and preparation and organization. And I think the meeting in Srinagar is no exception to that. Um, this has uh, entailed uh, planning uh, at least a year, a year and a half prior to this act actual event. Uh, the G20 Secretariat uh, and uh, uh, members of the Ministry of Tourism have been visiting Srinagar. Um, Secretary of Tourism and I myself uh, visited tourism. This is the second time we are here uh, in advance of the meeting. Uh, when we came here about a few months ago, uh, we saw that there was a lot of work in progress. Uh, you know, Srinagar is a smart city. There was a lot of effort to uh, of complete the work relating to the smart city project. Uh, we also looked at many of the areas that we could that were relevant to the G20. And I can say with all sincerity that as we drive around the city, uh, we see a completely transformed uh, Srinagar. Uh, we've gone to the markets. We've gone to the riverfront. We've gone to the, the lake area. We've gone to many of the other places that we visited the last time, and we found that, uh, that Srinagar today is uh, uh, vastly more uh, beautiful. Uh, its facilities and amenities are that much greater. Uh, there is a lot of pride when we talk to many of the citizens uh, when we move around uh, the city uh, in some of the systems that have been introduced, whether it is underground uh, optic fibers, sewerage systems, water and drainage. I think from that perspective, uh, it is truly a smart city of the type that we would like to showcase uh, to the rest of the world. And uh, tomorrow, as you would receive a very large number of international delegates that would come from some of the most influential countries across the world, I think we can say with pride that this is one of our most beautiful, uh, naturally scenic, but also one of the most beautiful urban environments that we can present uh, to our guests uh, from across the world. 
Now, um, I mean, one thing that is uh, that Secretary of Tourism and Additional Secretary Rakeshi has already told you is that uh, the tourism working group is a very specific one. Um, it uh, is actually one of the working groups that is most in line with our objectives to present our rich and diverse cultural identity uh, to also uh, present to the world our tourism potential. And no other working group does it better than the tourism working group. In the first working group uh, of the tourism uh, 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 engagement, or rather uh, the tourism group, we was in Ran of Kutch in Gujarat, western part of India. The second one was in Darjeeling in West Bengal, in the eastern part of India. The third, of course, uh, which is Srinagar, which is the northern part of India, will present to our tourism uh, representatives from across the world uh, one of the most, as I said, scenic uh, uh, spots uh, in our country and from the tourism perspective, uh, very, very relevant. But what is more important, I think, is that we have tried to bring in specific elements of tourism, as Secretary mentioned, whether it is sustainable tourism, eco-tourism, adventure tourism, film tourism, what is relevant to JNK and what is relevant to uh, the, the Union Territory and the people of this place is what is being highlighted in this tourism working group uh, meeting. Uh, as you also know that uh, the uh, vision of the Prime Minister is to uh, ensure that the message of India's G20 presidency is taken down to the grassroots level through a Jan Bhagidari process. And so a lot of efforts have been made to uh, sensitize uh, people in our country about uh, G20 and that is why we have also hailed it in locations across our country, north, south, east and west. And in that context, I think a lot of effort has been done in Jammu and Kashmir uh, in terms of uh, the events that have been held on G20. I'm sure uh, Chief Secretary will speak more about it, but we were very, very impressed with things like the walkathon, uh, things like uh, the uh, cycle uh, event that was held to popularize G20, or the mock G20 process, uh, or the awareness rally uh, in Badgam, and you know, you had, as I said, the walkathon in Baramulla. Sports is an important area where uh, G20 is being popularized. So this, I think, is uh, critical, and film tourism, as Secretary mentioned, is very specific to JNK. Um, the, um, every meeting should have outcomes, and I said that there is no better outcome in terms of any sector or any industry than tourism in terms of percolation of wealth, distribution of wealth. Uh, the very idea that uh, we should uh, uh, use this meeting to draw attention to Jammu and Kashmir, introduce qualitative and uh, you know, specific and new areas of tourism, how can this help uh, revive uh, the local uh, economy in terms of uh, handicrafts, uh, textiles, uh, um, in many of the other very, very critical areas in Jammu and Kashmir, uh, which, is a very, which has a very rich uh, culture and, uh, and handicrafts tradition, I think is very, very important. And we ourselves have seen there's a lot of... Uh, effort and excitement in the city and in the, uh, in the state, uh, in the Union Territory on the potentials that can come forward. We've seen women's self-help groups, we've seen many groups mobilize and I want to mention this as an out, I mean, as a, not a person who lives in Jammu and Kashmir, someone who has come and seen it from outside, uh, but we are proud of the fact that uh, we have such traditions in our country and those traditions are today being revived, popularized and promoted in a manner that has never been done before. Uh, so, uh, one last aspect, and of course, uh, that is, uh, uh, besides the fact that the UN's SDGs um, very, very uh, greatly emphasize on uh, lowering inequality in terms of incomes, tourism does that, and I think that's important. But last but not the least, uh, I want to convey our very, very grateful thanks. You see, every G20 meeting, the role of states in Union territories is critical. The central government can do a certain amount, but at the end of the day, uh, the state's uh, role and the state's contribution is critical to the success of any G20 meeting in our country. And the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir, uh, led by the Honorable Lieutenant Governor, Honorable Chief Secretary, and an incredible and absolutely outstanding team of officers who have worked day and night to make this uh, event a success. I'm sure both Secretary uh, Tourism and I uh, would like to convey our uh, sense of both gratitude. It has been teamwork, of course. All of us have worked very closely together, but uh, the Union Territory really has gone out of its way, taken it as a matter of pride for the Union Territory, looked at the G20 as an opportunity, and I'm sure 
if the G20 is the most significant international event we have held in India ever, this will be the most significant event ever in Jammu and Kashmir and uh, we are all looking forward to that. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, may I now request our Chief Secretary, Union Technology of Jammu and Kashmir, Dr. Arun Kumar Mehta, to please address the media. Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Harshwardhan Singhla and uh, Mr. Arvind Singh, Secretary, and my dear colleague, uh, Additional Secretary, uh, Tourism De Ministry, and uh, our Secretary, Mr. Said Avid Rashid, and all of you sitting there. Welcome to GNK. It's a huge welcome to you, and uh, it's not only on my behalf, but people of JNK have been looking forward to this event with a lot of anticipation. In fact, I had a lot of people saying that how can we participate in G20? And uh, I didn't know how to make them participate because you can't participate in the discussions. So we held a lot of events in universities. We held a lot of in the, you know, events in the sports arena. So there has been huge enthusiasm. And uh, the mayor of the city will be hosting a lunch. And uh, if many of you will be invited there. So welcome to GNK. Uh, just about tourism, last year, 2022, this was the highest ever number of people who visited JNK ever. And this was 1.88 crore. And uh, uh, so some of you who may not understand crores, it is 18.8 .8 million. And uh, the number of tourists who visited Kashmir last year was twice the previous highest, which was in 2017. That's the change. So, and this is just the beginning. Mark my words, this is just the beginning. Next year, you will have trains coming here to Srinagar from, straight from Delhi. And uh, this will be a marvel in its own way. It will be a technological wonder, if I may say so. And the National Highway will be great. Some of you might actually want to drive from Srinagar to Jammu just for the driving pleasure in six months' time from today. And the trains will be beautiful. People of, uh, many people have experienced JNK yeah, and uh, may not know that JNK has a lot more to offer than you have seen. JNK has four colors. How, how many of you are aware? There is a white Kashmir in winter. There is a rainbow Kashmir in spring. There is a green Kashmir in summers. And there is an orange Kashmir in autumn. Experience each one of them. And you may have seen only few sites which Sonamar, Gulmarg, and, uh, but last year and the year before, we said it's not about few months in a year, it's about 12 months a year, tourism. And some of the sites that people never thought will be open in winters have started to remain open. For example, Sonamar now remains open throughout the year. And we have facilities. So we have 300 new destinations coming up. And with the amount of tourists that are flowing in, we need them to disperse them and let them enjoy the... In fact, many of the sites in JNK, both Jammu and Kashmir, are picture perfect. If some of the sites are straight out of the picture postcard, and uh, you have seen the riverfront, I'll just mention a few more things. One is that uh, it adds about 7% to our economy. And I'm extremely uh, grateful to the government of India to have uh, hosted this event here because that allows JNK to occupy its normal sort of slot in the tourism. If you are thinking tourism, it has to be it it has to be sort of JNK starting with because what it has to offer in terms of natural beauty is unbeatable. Today you have seen the dull, and uh, it, I keep saying this: dull is cleanest ever. You will have uh, lots of light and. Uh, clusters of light that you'll be seeing. And I welcome all of you to experience in the evening. Uh, the riverfront has come up now, the Polo View has come up now, the residency road and so on and so forth. I'm not going to count it. Uh, Jammu area, you will have the Dravi Barrage coming up, so you'll have Jammu upgrading itself in terms of tourism potential. Jammu has a lot of uh, tourism potential. JNK as a whole has immense tourism potential and uh, extremely grateful to the government of India to have given us an opportunity to uh, sort of host this event. Just a couple of more things and I'll close. One is that uh, we expect to cross the number of two crores this year, definitely. 
And uh, one of the very positive signs that has happened this year, and this, uh, uh, Mr. Shingla, you might like to take note of, that foreign tourists have come in a very large number this year. So this is catching up and going ahead. So we have already caught on with the previous numbers. And uh, so that's a very healthy sign that we have a lot of foreign tourists arriving here. Very, very healthy sign. And we are looking forward to welcoming both Indian guests as well as for foreign guests. Because in, when it comes to hospitality, there's nothing to beat JNK. And people of JNK are so hospitable, and you should experience it. And the second thing I wanted to tell you, that uh, this event will be there for next uh, three days, for 22nd, 23rd, 24th, 25th, you'll be going back. In between, we have made a lot of arrangements for you to be able to go out and see some places. Prerna is there, is the secretary information. She will be able to help you with some places. If you wish to go to some other places, apart from attending the event here, you'll be facilitated. So experience JNK. And uh, the transformation that is happening in JNK, Srinagar is just a small example of that. You can see that transformation in every sector and everywhere. And uh, we feel very proud of uh, being part of this. And we feel extremely happy that uh, Mr. Arvind Singh and Mr. Stringler have allowed this event to be hosted here. Look forward to you enjoying your time here. And look forward to all of you coming again. You'll be busy this time, so you'll not be able to experience as much as you would like to. But after 25th as well, some of you who are coming from outside should come back again and experience JNK. And, uh, but I hope you have a very wonderful time over the next three days. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, now, with these addresses, I'm sure that media would have got answers to any kind of queries they would have in their mind. But still, if there is something that you would like to ask, any questions relating to this G20 event, you are uh, welcome to ask them. Uh, my only request will be that please identify yourself in terms of your name and organization. Raise your hand so that it can, PC can be conducted in a smooth way. We will start with the lady first on the back side. Uh, Hi, sir. Naveed Iqbal from the Indian Express. Um, question for Mr. Stringla. I was wondering if you are concerned at all 